Here we're just going to take a quick look at kind of a variety of the different types of proteins that can be found inside the plasma membrane. We're not going to discuss each of these and very early on in the syllabus um, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around all of this because it just looks like a bunch of vocabulary words that have no real significant meaning to you. But the hope is as you continue through the syllabus, you'll start to see the bigger picture of how all of these proteins will work. And proteins are just so important. I mean, everything that the DNA codes for is primarily proteins. They all do different types of functions. So we're gonna look at the different types. Specifically here, we're looking at the proteins that can be found inside a plasma membrane. So don't get too scared right now. Each of these things is described in detail in a more significant part of, you know, bio studying different biological systems. So uh, don't get too scared about these types of things. So anyways, some of these proteins can help cells stick together, help cells identify each other. If you think about the hundreds of different types of cells that you have in your body, like skin cells next to skin cells, they have to be able to recognize each other. And so some of these proteins play a role in helping proteins to adhere with each other, to stick with each other. So an example is uh, something called cadherin. So it's just a specific type of protein that helps cells stick together. It's an integral protein, which means it goes all the way through the mem membrane. So the membrane is like this, it goes all the way through. A non-integral protein is one that's only stuck to the side or only partially embedded in the membrane. So integral means goes all the way through. Here's one example, and then here's what it actually does. Another type of protein could be something that is waiting to receive signals from hormones. Therefore, it's a hormone receptor. For example, certain cells need to do certain types of things, but they don't do them until somebody tells them to go do it. So in that case, there could be some proteins that are actually embedded in the membrane and hormones could come and attach to them. And as, as a result of a hormone attaching, it sets off a chain of events, basically. So a hormone receptor, that's another type. This one is gonna be hard to understand right now, but if you are going to be studying higher level cell respiration or higher level photosynthesis, uh, these electron transport chains are pretty important and they help to basically move uh, electrons from one place to another to transfer energy for the purpose of producing ATP or some other type of purpose uh, such as, you know, reducing NADP to NADPH. Again, if you haven't studied that stuff, this is going to sound like nothingness to you. But anyways, that's another goal of certain types of membrane proteins is they help to transport electrons around. You can have enzymes that don't move. If they don't move, then they're called immobilized enzymes. And in this case, this thing called cytochrome oxidase happens to be a protein that is embedded in a membrane and also happens to be connected to other types of proteins involved in electron transport. In the example here, it's called cytochrome C. I don't know how important recalling these random words will be. I think more importantly, you'll be asked questions about electron transport in context. If they do ask you about this, it'll just be making a list of different examples of possible proteins and what their functions may be. Another type of protein here is another receptor. So we said a hormone can cause a cell to do things. Neurotransmitters can cause the next nerve cell or the next neuron to continue, continue firing the next message or if you studied neurotransmission or if you studied the nervous system, then you know it's called an action potential. So that can be another role for a particular protein. They can also be a protein channel, something like this, like a little tunnel to help things get through. The sodium channel or the potassium channel are examples of protein channels that help things move by diffusion down a concentration gradient. So again, you're gonna see all of this spread out in different topics as well too. And finally, one more type of protein that you might find in there is another integral protein that goes all the way through. Sometimes we give it the name a pump, which helps us remember that pumping is not easy, therefore it requires energy, and that energy is usually in the currency of ATP. So requiring ATP, pumping things against their concentration gradient. So you'll see a lot of this in the cells unit when you're learning about membrane transport and moving things across the membrane. And you'll hear a lot about um, 
protein channels versus protein pumps. So these two examples uh, you're actually going to see a lot of in the cell unit with membrane transport being discussed. So anyways, kind of annoying. It's probably better to watch this video or go back and study this stuff as a review after you've gone through the entire syllabus. But nonetheless, it is very early on in the syllabus, especially if you're going in order in topic one. So these are a sampling of the different types of proteins that you'll come across in your two years of study. Good luck with that.